now for the second part of the video we are going to look at an application i refer to as the qr code generator so i'll double click on this and here is my qr code generator so once again this graphical user interface application a desktop application for that matter is something you can share with any other person and then whatever thing i type over here let's say www dot kenbruni.com this www.kenbruni.com when i click on create a qr code is created and for those of you having scanners you can pause this video do a scanning of this and you're actually going to see that this data is embedded in this qr code and that's exactly what you want to do so welcome back now in the second part of this video i'm going to walk you through how we can create a qr code generator and that's basically the application i just demoed so we are going to need two main libraries over here which is of course the pi simple gui and the qr code library so i'm going to start off by doing an import of those two libraries so i'm going to say import qr code and then the next thing i'll need is import pi simple gui this way and i'm going to give it an alias as sg so over here we would want to create a window so i'm going to do sg dot window i'll call the window class over here and of course we need to pass in a title so the title i'm going to have is going to be qr generator something like this and then i would also need a layout and we are going to specify the layout right on top over here so i'm going to say layout and based on the demo i showed the layout for this one is a very simple one so in the list of list i'm going to say sg dot input and based on what we know so far and the fact that we are going to work with the keys i'm going to provide a key over here so i'm going to say key and this is going to be my input so i'm going to say input over here and i would have a button next to it so i'm going to do sg dot button and the label i want for the button is going to be create and the key i want for this button is going to be create underscore btn so everything is looking good now that we have this based on our previous knowledge i just want to have a variable or more or less an object over here and now i can bring in the while loop so i can say while true i would want to have the window dot read and i would want to have my event and values being decomposed over here and then i'm going to say if the event is equal to sg dot when close sorry as you dot when closed this way i would want to break out of this loop and then finally i would want to do window dot close this way so far so good i don't think we should have any problem over here but then let's just have a preview of how our application is going to look like so when i run this we get this showing up over here now there's a widget i want us to include over here and that's going to be the image widget and this is what i mean remember in the demo we had this um a little bit dragged out over here okay in terms of the interface and in order to get that let's just come down here do a comma and now i'm going to do sg dot i'll pass in the image widget over here and once again i'm going to give it a key and the value i'm going to pass over here is going to be image and finally i'm going to give it a size so i'm going to say size and for the size i need to specify the height and width so i'm going to say 200 comma 200 for both height and width so now that i have this when i run this 
our interface is looking a little bit different and this is exactly how it was done in the first place so everything is looking good so far now we can actually grab this button okay by the key so i'll do a control c over here and then i'll come in here and i'm going to say if the event is equal to this button based on the key that we have over here first of all let's just start doing some printing so first of all i want us to print the values and the values are basically going to be the input fields that we have things that we can put in values so now when i run this and if i click on this we get our dictionary okay our key value pair the key is exactly what you have specified as input and now there's nothing in here but then if i type in ken and press this we now have ken showing up over here now based on what we know so far because we are building upon this i would want to grab this by the key and the key that we want is this input key so i'll do a control c of this and i would want to grab this and then i would want to have this saved in a variable called data so once again let's just do a printing of the data variable as we have over here now when i run this and pass in any piece of data over here when i click on this save button we get kenneth being printed out over here because that's exactly what we have instructed our program to execute so now that we have this we can now use this qr code to generate whatever qr code that we want so i will come in here and now i can do qr code dot there's a make method over here and now i can pass in data this way and this data is the data that we have over here and i'm going to save this in a variable called qr so qr is going to be equal to qr code dot make and i pass in the data now i can do qr dot save and then i need to pass in the name that i want to save this data by so i'm going to say code dot png and now i'm good to go so now let me just open this up because it is going to run and save in the same directory the folder as the program so if i run this application and i type in let's say ken and click on this create we have this code dot png showing up over here and that's basically the fact that yes when this event is triggered this creates btn i want you to grab the values dictionary and currently what we have as value is going to be this input so we are grabbing the input and then we are creating a qr code from the data and we are saving it as code.png so now when i click on this code.png those of you who have qr code scanners on your phone you can actually pause this video and do a scanning of this and we are actually going to see that indeed the data can is what has been used or it is the data that has been embedded in this qr code so everything is looking good now there's a little bit of um, an issue not too much of a big issue but then something we are going to fix now what i want us to do is okay so in the preview we saw that the qr code is also going to show up over here and that's exactly why we have this image widget or piece of interface showing up over here so now i'm going to grab this so i'll do a control c and in order to get this working properly this is how we are going to go about this i'm going to change some few things over here so i'm going to have a variable called file name and file name is basically just going to be code dot png for now so instead of hard coding it over here i can now use the variable name that i have in here so i'm going to do control c and then i'll do a control v so everything is looking good nothing so much has changed so now i can do and this is what i want to do i can actually grab the entire window okay this entire window i can grab it and i can actually target some specific things i want to get 
so this is what i mean i can grab the window and say window and i'm going to grab it by not the file name but then by this widget key that i have over here which is the image so i'll do a control c on this and i'll bring it over here and now i'm going to do a dot update so i want to update that piece of the widget and what do i want to update it by i want to update it by the image but this time around i'm going to say file name is going to be equal to file name so this file name the second one we have over here is precisely this file name that we have over here and this is just basically how we reference it so now when i save this and run this application once again everything is working perfectly now if i'm to do bruni and click on generate we have this showing up over here now the interesting thing is initially we had ken we generated a qr code and when we created Brony, this data has now been overwritten, which is not what we want. We want um, the old files to be saved. So in order to get that working, we can actually make the file naming system a little bit dynamic. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a little bit of technique over here. So I'm going to have a formatted string. And in here, I'm going to pass in the value data over here so at least every data is going to be unique and if it is not unique we are basically just going to rewrite or overwrite on the old one which is not going to be so much of damage so now sometimes the name can be too long so now let's just do a slicing and maybe i just want the first three characters over there so now everything is looking good now when i run this Um, first of all, I think I need to close this first. So, yes, it is working now. If I'm to type in Ken Neth and click on create, yes, and I'll get Ken code.png. At least it is a little bit dynamic over here. Okay. If I'm to do Bruni now. The QR code changes, and indeed, I have brocode.png. That's also an interesting one. So, at least we get to keep our data. And as to how you get um, things working out, you can use different dynamics. You can use even um, the time by the second, which is definitely going to change at every second. So, definitely, we are going to have some different dynamics of um, names that you can use. Now, what I want to show is, I want to take you to my YouTube channel and then generate a QR code of my URL. So, I can come in here and paste this over here. And when I click on create, I get this showing up over here. And this is basically my Cambrotech YouTube channel. So, definitely when you do a scanning of this, it is going to give you the link to my youtube channel and please kindly subscribe because this is a good one all right so if you find value in the videos that i'm doing kindly support me by subscribing to the camera tech youtube channel also share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful at camera tech we say learn programming you can do it bye bye and catch you in the next video